summer day like today is perfect for getting out there, hitting the trails, but to some, it's also attractive to other creatures. I'm talking about rattlesnakes, people. Look at that. That just gives me the EBGBs <laughs> looking at it on TV. It's important we know what to do when we're out and about, so we invited Jeffco Ranger Mary Ann Bennell. She's here to talk about uh, some valuable information about rattlesnakes. Mm -hmm. Now, rattlesnakes have been in the news lately. Explain why. Well, there's several reasons why. First of all, anything that's potentially dangerous to humans is yeah. fascinating to us. But also, at Jeffco Open Space, we've been doing rattlesnakes snake research all summer so we've had a team of researchers at North Table Mountain and that has generated a lot of interest in rattlesnakes then we also had the tragic uh, incident of the young man that was bitten on one of our trails and and died oh, and so that was very hard news for people to and it's, it's an unusual case and then lastly we just closed a trail last Friday at North Table Mountain because of rattlesnake activity so I would say those are some of the reasons why rattlesnakes are in the news right now I thought they were hibernating at this time of year you though. know it's it's what a lot of people think Think, but like today is a great example. It's 80 degrees and on a nice sunny side of a rock, you can't beat that if you're a rattlesnake. That's a great place to be out in the sun and get that last meal that you had digested before you go into hibernation. Oh my gosh. So where are we most likely besides the rocks? Where are we most likely to see these rattlesnakes? So rattlesnakes are throughout the front range, but on this in this time of year where you're going to see them is anywhere where they can get a good nice warm bask. So that would be a nice open trail. That would also be in front of a rock. That would be anywhere, even on pavement. So they'll go on to like a, a, a paved area, dark asphalt to, to get warm. So anywhere where there's going to be warm sun basking opportunities. What should I do if I see that little critter right there on the screen? What should I do? <laughs> well, the most important thing is to leave it alone. Yeah. And what we like to say is give it the 30-30 rule. Take 30 steps back and wait 30 seconds and see if it actually clears the trail. Um, a lot of times they will. They don't want anything to do with us. For for no reason whatsoever should you ever throw rocks no. at a snake or poke it with a stick. That is how people are injured. So we just ask that you give the snake space and time to get away from you and your dog, for that matter, and your kids. So teach everybody to leave the snakes alone and keep your dog on a leash because they're impossible to teach. Never to leave a dog alone. Poke. <laughs> A snake with a stick. Never throw rocks at a snake with a stick. And don't do it to me before 7 a.m. in the morning before I have my coffee, or you will be in trouble, for those of you who know me. So how do I identify a rattlesnake? And this one is green. Why is that green? So rattlesnakes do vary in color. Some of them are quite gray in color. Some of them are this very bright green. Even We've even seen some that are sort of pinkish in color. Um, but the main way to identify a rattlesnake is they all tend to have white stripes on their face that come down across. So that's a great photo for that. You can see those white stripes on the face. You can see that pattern on the back. And then, of course, you can't always see this, but they'll either have a rattle or they'll have a blunt tip where the rattle should have been if it's fallen off. And the young snakes, it's very important to remember, juvenile snakes don't have a rattle yet. They're, they're um, born with just a little tip that's called a button. So just like that. So that's not going to make a noise, but you can still see how dark that is. It's, and you can see that it's different than a pointed tail. So it's falling off right now. No, that's a young snake oh, with just its button for a rattle. Oh, Okay, yeah. interesting. So what's the best first aid, though, for a rattlesnake? Say if I've been bit. Sure. In the unusual event that you're bitten by a snake, the most important thing is to stay calm. So you want to make sure you're not running that venom all through your body. So if you can safely sit down, don't yeah. sit on the snake, um, and call 911 right. and, and keep the bitten area at the same level or lower than your heart, and then have help come to you. Because if you start running around and you start getting really amped up, you're going to move that venom through your body and that's going to give the venom more of an opportunity to act on your body. That is so scary. How long do you have uh, before, I mean, it's too late? You have to get help and get that Sure. I, I don't know what it's called. Get the juice <laughs> the, back the, in the, you to get rid of the venom. Anti-venom. Yeah, and and again, the, the case that happened at Mount Galbraith was incredibly unusual. That's still under investigation, but a lot of folks think that might have been an allergic reaction. So that's a much shorter time frame. In general, a healthy adult that's a healthy weight and doesn't have any immuno um, issues with rattlesnakes or allergic issues with rattlesnakes, you actually have time. And so you should just relax and, and try and wait for help to come to you. And a lot of that depends on how much venom is released 
released into your body mm -hmm. and also where it's released which is why dogs are so critical dogs are often bitten on the face or the neck because that's what they investigate with and then when swelling starts to happen there you can imagine that that can be very tragic very quickly for a dog but humans were often bitten again it doesn't happen a lot but when we are bitten we're bitten on an ankle yeah. or an extremity and so that isn't going to be that severe of a reaction again unless you have an allergic reaction where can I find out more about rattlesnakes we have a great blog that's associated with our research project this summer it's called the rattler tattler and so you can get online and you can Google Google search the rattler tattler and it has all kinds of great photos it has a map of where we're seeing our study snakes at North Table Mountain and incredibly great information about rattlesnakes I love you Thank I really do she always has the best advice she's a great person but I think it's a little kooky that you're a big fan of rattlesnakes <laughs> I gotta be honest why um, well again I, I I don't love rattlesnakes I respect <laughs> rattlesnakes okay, I think they're, put I think they're beautiful first of all and I also think they have uniquely Colorado sort of adaptations. They're very low key, they blend in with their environment, they're low energy, and they're a super important part of the ecosystem. And honestly, if you sort of let them have their space and just sort of enjoy them from a distance, I think they're a very interesting creature. Interesting. And again, we're always fascinated by things that of are course. potentially dangerous. That's true, that's yes. so true. Thank you so much. Thank I really you for appreciate inviting it. us. If you'd like to find out more, brush up on your rattlesnake knowledge and find out what Marianne Medell, Ranger Marianne Bennell knows on the Rattler Tadler blog. Um, it's her, I'm sorry, it's coloradoherping.com slash ratter dash tadler. That, you say it, that makes no sense here. So just Google search Rattler Tadler. Okay, yes. search Rattler Tadler. For more information, <laughs> updates, and tips, visit jeffco.us slash parks. You can also follow Marianne on her Twitter. Her handle is at jcosranger1. Be safe, plan your next outdoor adventure with the help of this woman and of course Jefferson County Open Space.